Hello, hello. How are you guys and girls doing tonight? For those of you that are new here, my name is Laney Shaughnessy and welcome to Spindle TV. I'm going to be your host for the evening. Hopefully y'all are all doing well. And uh, yeah, hopefully things are going good. All right. I'm a few minutes early, so we'll give it just a few minutes to let people come in. But uh, uh, hopefully everybody's 4th of July was a good one, uh, if you celebrate it. Hopefully uh, everyone was safe, nobody was hurt, and uh, everybody had a good time. We're going to... Uh, We're going to draw some designs. We're going to do some design today. We're going to make a sign. We're going to be doing some image tracing. We're going to do some vector trimming. We're going to be uh, drawing shapes, uh, creating tool paths, and we're going to make a sign. So uh, the skill level is going to be from beginner to intermediate. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm going to show you a, a few things and hopefully you get to take something away from it and using your designing. And uh, uh yeah, so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> um, you guys didn't see me last week. Uh, we may, uh, the live classes might be every other week. Um, I just uh, can't afford to sustain an every week thing right now. Um, I've got, you know, uh, um, my site's not pulling in the income that it should and things like that. So uh, I've got to... Um, do other things to make money so I can survive. Um, so our classes might be every other Tuesday. So this will be the second Tuesday. Uh, so we might not have a class next week, but it, the following week we will. And if I can ever sustain, sustain and get back to it, then uh, we might do an every week thing. But uh, for right now, every other week is where we're kind of at right now. Um, so and if any of you, any of my viewers, if any of you are doing DoorDash, like working, like driving for DoorDash, you know, to make some extra income as a side hustle, let me know in the comments what you think of it. I have a choice, OnlyFans or DoorDash, and I'm kind of on the fence. <laughs> Between which one's going to make me some extra income. All right. Let's see here. Let's jump over. It is uh, 715. Let's go ahead and jump over to channel. What channel am I on? Channel three. <laughs> uh, what camera is? There we go. Camera three. And let me jump down to the bottom left corner. So I'm down here in the corner. Hello, everybody. All right. Now, what you see on the screen is just kind of a sampling of what we're going to be making. It's not finished. This is just kind of me playing around earlier. Do, 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 do. So we're going to be starting from scratch. But, um, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and delete that for right now. We'll redraw it. We're going to make it from scratch. I'm going to show you. We're going to be using some... Uh, different elements and stuff uh, to do it, but I got a fun little one for you. I just want to show you a way that you can uh, think about, you know, drawing and doing things um, and uh, think about drawing and doing things and uh, just using shapes to make other shapes. So here's a fun little quick one. Uh, let's see how quickly we can uh, do this. So we're going to go into the drawing tools. And I'm going to import a bitmap image to trace. Uh, in the bitmap image, I'm going to go to downloads and I'm going to uh, come in here and type in heart. And I'm just going to grab this heart image woo, right here. And I'm going to trace it. So we're going to use the trace bitmap tool to trace the image. So when we trace an image, the first thing that happens is it fades the image out. So step number one, let's turn that bitmap fading off. 
Okay. Step number two, we're going to um, take our slide bar and we're going to slide until we get, you know, the image that we want. I'm going to go about 75 on the threshold. I've found that on most images, most images between 50 and 75 is a good threshold uh, when you're tracing an image in a black and white, uh, the black and white option. Uh, 50 to 75. And if it's a high resolution image without a lot of trash and stuff, uh, 75 is usually my go to top of my maximum threshold. Uh, default corner fit, uh, default noise filter, and I'm going to hit preview and I'm going to trace that heart. Right. And um, click apply and close. All right. All right. Let's take that heart and let's slide it up here a little bit. Fun times. Now I'm going to take a circle and I'm going to draw a circle in here. And I'm going to take that circle and I'm going to move it right to the top of that heart. And then I'm going to go into node editing, second icon on edit objects, first row. And I'm going to cut the vector right at the top here. And I'm going to pull that vector down and over to right about here. I'm going to take this arc and pull it up. So it kind of creates a little bit of a smooth turn. All right. A little bit of a smooth turn. Uh, and then I'm going to come into uh, out of node editing mode. I'm going to hold my control key down and drag a copy of that little swirl down here. And I'm going to drag that right about there. Looks good to me. And I'm going to go back into node editing. And I'm going to pull this node around. I'm going to get rid of this other one, delete that. I'm going to pull this node up. And basically, I'm just kind of, I want to kind of just kind of complete the swirl, if you will, right? So I'm going to just kind of pull this around and pull that arc up. Pull that in a little bit. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim here and there. Let's go back into node editing mode for just a moment. And right here, I want to kind of smooth this out a little bit. So I just want it to kind of smooth around. And right here as well, too, I want to kind of smooth this around a little bit. All right. Good enough. All right. Okay. Let's go into our... Um, Let's go into our regular normal mode. I want to take this heart and I'm going to size it down just a little bit. And I'm going to pull it back up to there. Okay. All right. Let's take a line tool and let's grab a line. Let's go from here to here. Space bar to finish. We'll go from here to here. Pick a spot, space bar to finish. And then. Let's grab an oval. Let's take that oval and I'm just going to move it down and over a little bit. Let's take our scissors and let's trim all the way around here. And then let's take a curve tool. And let's come here to here to here. And we just made a rose petal. <laughs> All right. Sounds fun. Just showing you how you can take lines, arcs, and curves, and images, and things, and you can, you know, trace them and all uh, to make shapes that you might need to make. Now we're going to be actually making an image that we can totally work with uh, here and everything, but I'm just kind of giving you a quick and simple, quick and dirty, basically kind of way that, to show you how you can use your lines, your arcs, your curves, your node editing, uh, tracing an image like we did for the heart, you know, uh, and some images like, you know, this started off as a heart, right, that we traced, but ends up as kind of a makeshift rose, if you will, right? Now, 
if I went into node editing and, you know, maybe pull this up a little bit higher over here and pull this up a little bit higher over here, you know, it might look more like a rose, whatever the case may be, but just to kind of, just a quick and dirty way to show you how, you know, you can take shapes and make shapes, right? All right, so that was just a fun little get you warmed up to what we're going to be doing tonight. All right, now let's actually get into the project, okay? So I was looking online and I saw a 3D model uh, that I really liked um, and uh, I haven't bought it yet. I'm going to buy it, but the design, um, I thought, oh, that would be a cool design that, that could have a lot of different words or sayings and things in it. So I'm going to take you through the steps of drawing this out and then we're going to do a V carve, uh, V carving, raised text kind of V carving to raise all the elements to give it kind of almost a three dimensional look. But we're using V carve pro where we can use pro desktop or aspire, uh, just to kind of create that two dimensional cut. Right. And, um, we're going to, uh, uh, start off with our job setup for this. I'm doing a 16 inch long board. That's 11 and a quarter, basically a one by 12. That's 16 inches long, three quarter inches thick. Uh, I'm going to touch off on the material surface and I'm going to start in the bottom left corner. So that's my job setup. Now I'm going to take a rectangle here and <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, on my rectangle, I want it to be centered. So I'm going to use my calculation edit boxes to help me lay out my border that I'm about to do. So on my X, the center, I want the center of my rectangle to be centered on my board. So I'm going to find the center. So I'm going to take my width. I could use the letter W or X because the width is of this computer screen is the same thing as the X axis and the height of the computer screen is the same thing as the Y. So I could use the letter W for width or H for height or X and Y, whichever one I want to use. In this case, I'm going to use W and I'm going to divide that by two and that'll give me the center of this width here of my board. I'm going to take my H, the height, I'm going to divide that by two, and that's going to give me the center up and down. Now I want my radius. I'm going to do round uh, corner radiuses. I'm actually going to do a three inch radius on this rectangle. And I want uh, to come in from all four sides by about a half inch. So I'm going to take my width and I'm going to subtract one inch from that half on this side, half on that side is one inch. So I'm going to subtract one inch from that and hit equals. And then I'm going to take my height H and I'm going to subtract one inch from that and hit equals. And then I'm going to create that boundary centered on my board, that half inch in on both all four sides with the three inch corner radius, right? So I'm using my calculation edit boxes because in my calculation edit boxes here, I can add, subtract, multiply, divide. I can do fraction to decimal conversion. I can do, you know, pi conversions. I can do metric to imperial, imperial to metric, all those things in there. And um, if I go into the user manual, help and help contents, in that user manual, on the left-hand side in the interface menu, if we go down to calculation edit boxes, you can see the different variables that we can use in those calculation edit boxes. And you always use the equal key to finish off the equation, whatever it is, never the enter key. It's always the equal key. Okay, cool stuff. All right. So uh, before we get on to the next step here, uh, we're going to answer a quick question. Gary Wolf has a question. Um, Let's see if I can answer that uh, quickly enough. Had one image on top of another and wanted to move uh, the top image behind the other. How can I do that? I tried modeling tab, but it did not work. Now, uh, Gary, excellent question, 100%. And we're actually going to be simulating where one thing is in front of another on two images that we create. So 
Stick with me. We're not too far away from that. And you're going to see exactly step by step how I achieve that look of one thing in front of another. Okay. So stick with me. We're going to get there literally in just a few minutes because we're going to be doing that same kind of scenario. Okay. Awesome stuff. All right. Now I'm going to take my border here and I'm going to offset it inward. I want kind of a nice, I like a little frame, if you will. I'm going to offset it using the offset tool inward and I'm just going to offset it a half inch. I don't, I don't want, I just want a nice half inch border all the way around. Um, there are no sharp corners, so I don't need to check that. And I'm just going to offset that inward by that half inch. All right. Cool. Now, <clears throat> I'm in my clip art, I have a folder called custom images. So when I trace an image, when I trace an image, I save that traced file, that CRV trace file in a folder called custom images so that I have those tracings that I can just drag and drop into my, you know, um, into my project, you know, however I want. I've got, you know, different objects and all that I've traced. Um, and so we're going to end up using that. But for right now, I'll actually import the image and show how to trace it, even though we kind of trace the heart. Similar, same thing, step by step, rinse and repeat. But we're going to import an image. Okay, I'm going to go into the trace bitmap tool. And again, that fading, I'm going to turn that bitmap fading off. I'm going to slide my slide bar up to 75 for me. That's my threshold, the top of my threshold, and that's the, what I want. Uh, default corner fit, noise filter is good there. And I'm going to click on preview, apply and close. And then I'm going to turn that bitmap layer off. So I have that traced image, right? Now, when I trace an image, I only want to trace it one time. Okay, so here's my pro tip. I only want to trace an image once. So what I generally normally do is I will create a project. And I'm going to create a new project here. Let me copy this. Click copy on that. And on the project, I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be a six by six. That's all that I care about. I don't care about anything else in this, but six by six. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to paste that image that I copied in there. I'm going to size it down. And center it on that board. Get it sized to fit. Now, when I save it, save as, when I save this design, I want no tool pass, no layers, no nothing, just that image on that six by six. And on my desktop, I've already created the shortcut to the custom images folder. But where that folder would be located, the long way before you create your shortcut on your desktop to make it shorter, it would be on your C drive, program file, no, I'm sorry, back it up, C drive, users, public, public documents, Vectric files, clip art. And in clip art, you would create a new folder. And in this case, I call it custom images. That's where I trace and save all those images and stuff in there. And um, once that folder is created, I'll come in here and right click on that folder. And then I'll go down to send to, and I'll create a desktop shortcut, put it on the desktop. So next time I just have to go to my desktop and drop that file in there, right? Um, so in here, we'll save this and we'll call this Eagle 03, even though I already have it in there, we'll put it in there again. And then when we go into our clip art tab in our software, <clears throat> When we go into our clip art tab, gotta 
give it a second for the clip art tab to open. In my custom images folder, I'll go ahead and I got that Eagle 03 right here, right? So it's our, you know, it's in there. Cool beans. So that's, that's, uh, you know, now I can just drag and drop that image in and uh, I don't have to retrace it over and over again. Okay. So that's a little bit of a pro tip. All right. Now coming back to our clip art, I want to go into the 2d vector clip art. And now I'm down in the way, so I'll scroll down so it's above my head. I'm going to come down to the panels, and I'm going to grab uh, Shield 5. And I'm going to drag that into the design, the vector of this shield right here. Okay. Shield 5. And... <clears throat> Now I'm going to draw out this kind of American shield, if you will. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to go into node editing. I want to select this node on the left here and this node on the right. And I'm just going to use the down arrow keys on my keyboard. And I'm going to bring those down. Right about there. This arc over here on the left side, I'm going to right click and change it from a Bezier curve to an arc. So I can, you know, shape that arc whatever way I want. And I just want a nice little arc here. Okay. I'm going to take this line and curve right here on the right hand side. I'm going to get rid of this node, delete that point. I'm going to turn this into an arc. And I'm going to pull this side out and kind of just create a rounded arc over here. Then I'm going to go up to the middle node and I'm going to cut the vector in the middle there and at the bottom. And I'm going to delete the left side. So I've got this kind of right side here we good so far good all right now i'm going to go into the mirror tool and i'm going to create a mirror copy and i'm going to flip to the left okay and then i'm going to take both halves and select them and i'm going to go to the join tool and i'm going to join those two selected vectors as one closed vector. Okay. Cool beans. All right. Now <clears throat> I'm going to take my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle, kind of a somewhat narrow rectangle like this. Now, if we look closely, my rectangle has rounded edges because it's, it's radius corners are selected over here. Doesn't matter it's getting trimmed away, so I don't care about that. Okay. I'm going to move this down just a little bit, right about there's good. And I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to make a copy of that. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm going to use the number nine on the keyboard and hit it twice to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to drag it over here right about there. Let me so far. And then I'm going to take a line and I'm going to draw a line from the center of the top of this down to the center of the bottom. And I'm going to go into the mirror tool and I'm going to select this vertical shape. I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to select that line and I'm going to use the option in the mirror tool to flip about that line. So it flips it evenly on the other side of that line. Cool beans. 
All right. Now I'm going to take my scissor tool and I'm going to do some trimming, but not yet. Before I trim, I want to create my offset of the shield, create a little frame for it. So let's go to the offset tool. We're going to offset outward. And I'm going to go just a, let me see what a half looks like. Too much. I'm going to go a quarter of an inch. I'm going to create sharp corners because I want the sharp points still to be there. And offset outward that half inch. Okie dokie, dokie, dokie. All right, cool. Um, let me think out loud real quick. I'm going to go 3 8 I think 3 8 is what I want instead of a quarter. So I'm going to undo that, Control Z, and I'm going to go 0 0.375, 3 8 Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to come in and trim this away, this, this, and this line there to connect that T, if you will. Trim this away, this, this, and that line there to connect that. I'm gonna come over here and trim this away, this away, this way, and this inside line to connect that. Trim this, 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 and that away to connect that. Down here, same thing. One, two, three, and four. And over here, the same thing. One, two, three, and four. Now, I'm gonna keep this line here because I'm going to use it again in just a minute. So I'm going to keep that line there, but it's going to be gone when I'm done with it. Okay. So now I want to take my star tool. I'm drawing a patriotic five pointed star. So my inner radius percentage is going to be 38.2. A constitutional star has an inner radius percentage of 38.2. So I'm going to come in here and Draw a decent size star. And I'm going to use the down arrow key. Well, let's close this tool for a minute. I'm going to use the down arrow key. Bring that down just a little bit. About like that. Hold down my control key. My control key is going to allow me to make a copy. I'm going to hold down the control key and drag that copy over here. All right. Let's make sure you uh, let go of the mouse before you let go of the control key. There we go. Um, and I'm going to take and size this down. I'm going to hold the shift key and size this down. And my arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm just going to bump this down. And I'm going to kind of pick a spot that I think that I like. So I'm happy there. Now, I'm going to take this star, I'm going to hold the shift key down and select this line, and again, in my mirror tool, I'm going to click the button to flip about line. Okay. Awesome. All right, now I can get rid of this line here, and I've kind of created this uh, patriotic stars and stripes shield, right? That's what we just did. Okay. Cool beans. All right, now I want to select this entire shield and I want to group it together as one item. So I'm going to go to the group tool and group it together as one item. Okay. And I'm going to center it onto the material. And then, of course, I'm going to size everything down now. And Gary Wolf, we're about at that step to, uh, where we have one image on top of the other and everything. So I'm going to size this down, get it kind of how I want it. I'm going to have text going across the top at a bit of an arc here and text going across the bottom. So I want to size this appropriately. And now I've already centered it on the material. And if I hold the shift key down when I'm grabbing the corner boxes, that will keep it centered while I size it up or down, right? So I'm going to size that down. Let's take the eagle and let's also center that on the material. But this on the eagle, I want to size it down some. Hold that shift key. 
and I'm going to use the down arrow. I want the head kind of below the stars. Okay, so something about like that. Let's. I'm going to size the shield up just a little bit. About like that is good. All right. Now, <laughs> Gary, pay attention to this part. This is the part that we're talking about. Now, I need, I have two objects. I have the eagle and I have the shield. When this carves, I need the illusion that one object is in front of the other. In this case, the eagle in front of the shield. Okay? So that means everything that the eagle is covering, you know, the wings and all that, all these stripes and all, have to be removed. They have to be removed so it looks like the eagle is in front of it, you know, and if the eagle's in front of it, whatever's behind the eagle can't be seen, right? Now, when we go to remove this uh, this object and all, we need these vectors to close, be closed so that they can carve properly and stuff. We don't want to create open vectors. So what we're going to do is we're going to ungroup the eagle. Everything is grouped currently right now in the eagle. We're going to ungroup it. And I need on the outer boundary of the eagle, I'm going to create an offset, a boundary line. Now, I actually need two of them. One of them for the purpose of I'm going to create this eagle as a raised object, like a 3D object, kind of. Uh, two and a half D, let's call it that. Um, so I need an offset boundary for that. But then I also need another boundary to be my trimming boundary to trim the shield to. So we're going to do two offsets. My outside border is all I'm selecting, the outside border of the eagle, that outside line. We're going to offset it outward. And I'm going to go a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to go outward. I don't need sharp corners on this, so I'm going to click Offset. Okay, that's going to create this new line. Now, I'm going to create, that new line has already been selected, so it's there. I'm going to create an additional offset from that line, another sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to offset there again. Now, this second boundary line that I created is going to be my trim boundary. So we are going to select the shield. We're going to hold down the shift key and select that furthest outside boundary. That's going to be the boundary. And we're going to go into our trim tool. It looks like a barber pole, a little candy cane icon there, the second row, fourth icon over from the left. And we're going to clear inside the boundary. So that means the last item we selected, which is the boundary around our eagle, that's our boundary. We want to clear everything inside of it away from the second object, which is the shield. And when it clears it, it's going to redraw the vectors. So we're going to clear inside the boundary. And it's going to remove everything from inside that boundary and it's going to redraw those vectors. So if I delete this outside boundary of this eagle, you can see where it closed off the vectors. Okay, so now the eagle is in front of the shield, right? The eagle's in front of the shield. Now, vice versa, if we had the shield in front of the eagle, which we'd only be able to see the eagle tips, right, of the wings, <laughs> we wouldn't be able to see none of the eagle because it would all be removed. But in this case, the eagle's in front of the shield, right? So, and I'm going to hit Control-Z to put that boundary back for a second, but we created a boundary to trim to, and I went with a sixteenth of an inch to give me enough room. I want enough clearance. I want that eagle sitting right in front of that shield and everything. And I, I want the lines, I don't want the lines on top of each other because when it redraws, you see how it redraws the lines on top of each other. I don't want that, you know, because this, this boundary is going to get deleted. It's only used for that trimming purpose, that second boundary. So when I delete it, I want that clearance. Okay. I want that clearance. 
All right. All right. So now just to get we're going to do we're going to do a preliminary tool path just so you can see that illusion of the eagle in front of the shield, okay? So I'm going to select we're nowhere near done with the design, but I'm going to select the bound the border here and everything inside. And let me do this first. Let me delete all of these. There we go. All right, let's select that boundary and all. We're going to do a V-carve toolpath. We're going to do a flat area clearance tool, a flat area clearance of 0.125. I'm going to limit it. So a flat depth is a limit to an eighth of an inch. I'm going to use my 60 degree V-bit. I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill. Now I could use a quarter and an eighth. I'm just going to use an eighth for right now because we're not done and this toolpath is going to get deleted. Um, this is just for preview purposes only. So I'm going to calculate this toolpath. <clears throat> and if we preview the two toolpaths, All right, we have that illusion, and let's add some color just for kicks and giggles. We have that illusion of the eagle in front of the shield, right? You see that? So Gary, if you're talking about I have one image on top of another and I want to move, you're saying I want to move the top image behind the other, well, imagine that we had both of our vectors together of the shield and of the eagle they were all they were all kind of intermingled now we had two separate groups the shield was grouped together the eagle was grouped together that way we could easily manipulate and move things around but now we ungroup that eagle because it's going to be the front object we use that boundary and we kind of create the outside border of the eagle and we create that boundary offset and we trim the shield to that boundary, clearing everything inside that boundary away so it redraws on the outside and it gives that illusion. So Gary, let me know uh, if that helped kind of clear things up for you. We're gonna be doing that again in just a minute. There's another step where I'm gonna be clearing inside of a boundary because there's one other thing that I'm gonna put on top of the eagle in just a moment, right? Okay, all right, let's come back here. Okay. So now I want to put some stars on the side here. So I'm going to grab this middle star. It's there. Why not use it? I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to drag a star here. While I have that control key held down, I'm going to drag out two more stars. Okie dokie, dokie, dokie. All right. Now I want these stars evenly spaced vertically inside this inside rectangle. So from top to bottom of this rectangle, I want these stars, these three stars, spaced equal distance inside that inner rectangle. So I'm gonna select these three stars. I'm gonna hold down the shift key, I'm gonna select this inner rectangle, and I'm going to come over here, um, and down at the bottom of my alignment tool, I have space selection. I want to check off the box that says inside last vector, which is my rectangle. That's what I selected last. And I want to space vertically up and down. Okay, so it spaces them evenly. Right? So the distance from the top of this line to the top of the star is the same as the distance from the bottom of this star to the top of this one, bottom of this star to the top of this one, and bottom of the star to this line. It's all equal distance. Okay? cool beans. All right. Now that I've spaced them, right? Now that I've spaced them and everything, I want to, oops, don't do that. I want to, um, I want to select these three and I need them kind of in line with one another. So I'm going to use, with those three selected, just the three stars, I'm going to use the left to right align to selection and just make sure they're in alignment with each other. 
Cool beans. Cool beans. Now, the um, with that, this star is a little bit close to this eagle here, right? Now it's not it's not very close at all. But what I want to do is I actually want to bump. I kind of want to create almost like a little bit of an arc, a little bit of an arc. I want to bump this star that's in the middle. I want to actually bump it to the left one, two times with my left arrow key on my keyboard. And I want to take these two, hold down that shift key, select both of them, and I want to bump them to the right. One, two, three. Four. Let's go three, three times. Okay. Now I'm going to select those three stars again, and this time I'm going to mirror them. I'm going to create a mirrored copy and flip it about the job center. And I'm going to flip horizontally to put them on the other side. Okay. Actually, uh, Ronnie, it's got to be on your connection. I'm not having any buffering tonight. Knock on wood. I don't have any damn wood to knock on. There we go. So far, I've everything has been an excellent connection. No buffering or anything like that. So, um, it's uh, my cache is good. The bit rate is good. So it would have to be on your end, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Okay. So. So far, so good. Now, I'm just going to kind of keep creating the tool pass just as we go along so you can kind of see the progression of what's going on. So I'm going to open up this tool path here, and I'm going to select the stars. And I'm just going to recalculate that tool path, right? Okay. And I'm going to reset the preview and preview that visible toolpath again as the progression goes along. All right. So here we are now. Okay. Still got a ways to go. Now, I want to put a banner right across here okay so i have a picture of a banner it's not the best quality picture of a banner uh but it will do for the time being uh in my clip art under my custom images uh i don't actually have it saved there so i actually have to import it in <clears throat> in my downloads And the banner image that uh, I'm bringing in, it's a real small one. We'll zoom into it. Really blurry. The blurry image means that it's a low quality resolution. Uh, tracing, you know, could be a little rough. Uh, we could smooth it out, but I'll do my best to kind of clean it up during the tracing. But I want the banner to be arched upward like it is here. Okay, I want it to be arched upward. So I'm going to go into the trace tool again. I'm going to turn that bitmap fading off. And you can see how rough it is, right? I'm going to bring that up to a 75 uh, to kind of see what I can do. But on this one, I'm going to bring the noise filter up to like a 5 or a 6. So that when I preview this, that it'll try to create those nice lines as smooth as possible without trying to trace, you know, those stair steps in that and everything. I'm going to click apply and close and I'll just go ahead and I'm going to hit delete to delete that image. And so I have this banner here and for my purposes and everything for what I want, it's going to carve just fine. Um, you know, but if I wanted to, uh, I could go, uh, into node editing. Let's ungroup this and I could smooth out some of these lines. Now, one way that I would do that immediately, Kind of smooth out the lines that I is I would actually go into the curve fit tool. It's the 
third row down, third icon over in your Vetric software, curve fit tool. <clears throat> and I would go circular arcs, tolerance, uh, let's go uh, 0.06. And I wanna replace the selected vector with the new ones. And let's click on preview. And you can see that 0.06 was way too much, completely distorted it. Don't want that, right? So let's undo, control Z. And I'm gonna turn that back down. Let's go back to a 0.01. And preview that. Let me see here. Control Z. I'm gonna actually leave it the way it is. I'm just gonna let it roll the way it is. If I want it better, then I'll get a better image and trace it, right? But that's gonna actually be good. So we're gonna not do any of that curve fit stuff. I'm gonna size it up and let's get it centered on the board. Centered left to right, there we go. Now, I wanna size this up just a little bit more. Not like that. Okay. And I want to bring it, uh, da -da -da -da. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. Out there. Now, the banner, in this case, the banner is going to be in front of the eagle. So it's going to be covering the eagle. Right? So, I need to regroup the eagle. Currently, right now, all of the vectors for the eagle are ungrouped. So I need to go in and I need to select all the vectors of the eagle. Okay, make sure it's only the eagle vectors that are selected. All right, nothing else. <clears throat> and I wanna group that back together. So let's group that back together. Go to the group tool because I want them grouped. I want them I want the software treating it like one object. Okay? When things are grouped together, they're treated like one object. Okay? So, my banner, I only need the outside vector, the outside vector. So, I'm going to ungroup the banner and I'm just going to select the outside vector. That's going to be my boundary. But Remember now, I want some clearance. I don't want lines on top of the other, okay? Now, I've gotta think about this when it carves and stuff. I'm gonna be carving this pocket here, okay? A V-carve toolpath cuts between two lines, skips the next two, cuts between the next two, skips the next two. That's how you get that kind of raised area and stuff. So if we were looking at the preview cut, it's cutting between these two lines, skipping between these two, cutting between these two, skipping the star, cutting here, skipping the star, cutting here, that kind of thing, right? So I need to make sure that when it carves here, right, it's gonna be carving here, it's gonna skip this boundary and it's gonna carve right in the middle of that banner. I don't want that. I need that raised up. So, just like I did with the eagle, I'm gonna create two offsets. One is gonna be a permanent offset so that I have that extra line. And the second one is gonna be the boundary that I use to trim the shield and eagle to. So, come over to the offset tool. I'm gonna do a 16th and a 16th, just like I did before. 16th. And again, oops, okay, 16th and a 16th. And it's that second boundary that I'm trimming to, okay? That second boundary that I'm trimming to. So select my eagle, the object that I want to trim hold down the shift key and select the boundary last. 
go over to my trim tool. It looks like a little barber pole candy cane, my trim tool. And I want to clear inside that boundary. It means clear everything of the first object that I selected. Whatever's inside that last object, get rid of it and redraw it, right? So I want to clear inside. I'm going to hit clear. Okay. Wonderful. And stand by. I'm going to undo that because this vector is also inside the banner. So that needs to be part of the eagle group. So let me ungroup the eagle. And let me add, hold that shift key down and add this vector into it. This bottom part of the shield here, because that's inside my banner and group that together. Now, one more time, select that outside boundary, trim, clear inside the boundary. There we go. All right. And then that boundary, that second offset, I want to delete it. I don't need it. Now I could put it on another layer in case I screw up and I need it, you know, back and all, but everything is fine. So I'm going to delete it. Doesn't need to be in there. Okay. Now there's some little vectors that uh, I could probably get rid of. Little vectors that I could get rid of um, that are just kind of trash. Don't need those in there. Perfect. If you see little square vectors like this, those are pixels. If they're square, if they don't have any kind of roundness to them or whatever, they're trash. You can delete them. So I got a couple of those in my eagle. Uh, looks good. I probably have one or two right there. Okay. All right. So now I give the illusion of the banner being in front of the eagle. Right? Okay. Cool. So let's go in and create the tool path again. Now that we have this new object. Let's go into this toolpath and I'm going to reselect all the vectors and just calculate it. Now this is saying, hey, some vectors that you have drawn, there's an overlap somewhere, right? It contain overlaps and everything. Well, I want to find those and I want to fix them. Okay. I want to find them and I want to fix them. So. I want to go to the vector validator. Let's uh, come over here. I want to go to the vector. Let's turn those off for a minute. I want to go to the vector validator. VCAR mode insert selected. And I want to find those overlaps, those intersections. And what it is, is it's, it's not really an overlap or an intersection. It's what's called a zero length span. It means that there are two nodes on top of each other and there's no line, arc, or curve in between them. It's a zero length span. So there's a button right here that will fix those. So I want to just click on that to fix that. That's it. Okay. Now that that's been fixed, I'm going to recalculate this toolpath. So when you get that warning that pops up that says, hey, you have overlapping vectors. Do you want to go to the vector validator or continue anyway? You could continue anyway if you wanted to, if it wasn't, if it was, if it doesn't interfere with the design. But I would recommend going to the vector validator, find the issue and fixing it. Right? So let's go ahead and preview the visible toolpath. Again, the new toolpath. <clears throat> Okay. All right. So we have that there. All right. Now, I would like, I would like on this banner, I would like there to be some wood right here. I don't want it to be carved away like it is, right? Um, the, uh, let me see here. I, 
I want to fill in this big void right here. And I kind of want, let me look at the 3D view for a second. It's supposed to have the illusion. If we were to look at the image again, let's import that image again. Do, 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 do. It's supposed to have that illusion, that blank, that blackness and everything of that folded back, you know, that it's kind of folded back and everything. And so I guess that's okay. Yeah, it'll look better once I put the text in it. I could always change up the banner, you know, if I wanted to or whatever, but that's going to be fine. It's supposed to have that void there to give the illusion of it kind of folded back on itself, that negative space. Okay. Um, so we'll leave it. All right, now I want to add some text. I want to add some text, text. I would probably say that I probably either need to go a little bit bigger with my border, a little bit further out, so I have some room to arc a little bit of text here, or my middle emblem a little bit smaller. I, I'm going to elect to maximize the use of my board because I'm going to be cutting this profile cut out. I'm going to be cutting this out. So I'm going to maximize. Let's go offset outward. I want to go a quarter of an inch. Delete the original. Now let's go three eighths. Three eighths. Good. And I'm going to take this one out as well. Good. That's going to give me some more room up here and down here. Because I'm going to be cutting this shape out. Cool beans. All right. <clears throat> let's add some text. Now, this text could be really anything, right? Um, could be anything we want it to say. Um, in this case, I'm going to just go... Da -da -da -da, where's my text box here? I'm going to go um, <clears throat> all capital letters, America, America. Um, I am going to go one inch tall on the text. I'm going to center it on the material. I'm going to then hold down the shift key and stretch it out. Out like that. And then I'm going to go into the edit text spacing and curve tool. And I'm going to grab this top node here and I'm going to pull that up into an arc. And I'm going to use the down arrow key on my keyboard to bring it down. Okay. Make sure that I'm still centered. I am. All right. Now, let me look at my text box here for a minute. <clears throat> let me see if there's a better font that I like. Arial black. Let's go Arial rounded for a minute. 
not aerial rounded. Let's go aerial black. Yep. I'm going to hold down the shift key and bring that in just a little bit. Now, seeing that, even though I've given myself some space and everything, there's still I'm still overlapping here, right? Now, I could bump that up a little bit, you know, and I have a little bit of room here and there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my middle emblem. Okay. Make sure everything is selected on the middle emblem. And I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit. I'm going to hold that shift key and I'm going to just bring it down a smidge. little bit more okay and that way I can bring this down I'm gonna use the down arrow key and bring it down just a little bit and just give myself a little bit more room there okay all right wonderful okay now <clears throat> down at the bottom I'm going to type in an all, uh, yeah, I'll do all capitals again. Oh, oops, don't do that. Make sure that you're not clicked on America still. Let's click off of it. There we go. And I'm going to go home, oops, home of the brave. And I'm going to go half inch tall text. Because I'm going to size it up myself. I just half inch just kind of gets me there. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm centered left to right on the material. And then I'm going to hold the shift key down. Grab the corner box so it scales it accordingly. I'm not going to go too big. Grab the corner box. About there. And I'm just going to bump this down. And I'm going to go straight across with this instead of an arc here. Okay, so I want to I wanted to arc this, but I want to go straight across here. Okay. And for the banner in here, I'm just going to uh, just go. Uh, again, make sure you're not clicked on your letters. I'm just going to go freedom, right? Whatever. Um, let's try that again. F R E D O M D O M. All right. I want to make sure I'm centered left to right. I want to go into the edit text spacing and curve tool. And I want to pull this up. Well, before I pull it up, I want to stretch it out. I want to, I want to stretch it out a bit. So let me get out of that tool. I want to stretch it out a bit. I'm keeping the height, but I want to stretch it a little bit. So right about there. Now I'll do the edit text curve and spacing tool. Pull that into a bit of an arc. And I'm going to use the down arrow key to get me on the banner. And I want to make the arc somewhat match, right? So it's not going to be that dramatic. It's going to be more like that. We'll use the up arrow key. And again, make sure that I'm, oops, make sure that I'm centered. Okay. And let's say that this is one version of this sign, right? Let's say that this is the sign, okay? So let's go back into the tool path. Zero start depth, eight inch, eighth inch flat depth, uh, 60 degree V-bit, eighth inch end mill. Uh, I'm gonna do a raster cut and I wanna select everything except for the outside border, that, that's my profile cut. And I'm gonna calculate that again because I'm doing it as a raised design.
Okay, let's reset the preview and preview the visible toolpath, means the two toolpaths that are checked. All right, and then let's do our profile toolpath, this one here. Now, when this cuts, there's not gonna be any material here. It's only gonna be these corners that are pretty much kind of left so on the job like this, I would want to make sure that I secure it in a way because tabs aren't going to do me really anything. I could put two tabs in each corner. You know, if I have a clamp on this corner and a clamp on this corner, I could put two tabs in each corner to kind of help me a little bit. Uh, but in this case, I would probably use some kind of double side tape or hot glue or something uh, because when this gets covered away, the sides and the tops aren't going to have any material left. Uh, so we're going to do a profile tool path. Three quarters of an inch, I'm cutting through with a quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line. We're gonna calculate that and cut that toolpath away. <clears throat> and you can see the only thing I'm left with are those corners. So I'm gonna double click on the corners to remove that waste. And Let's turn off the color for a minute so we can see kind of what's going on here. And so there is our design. Okay. And so we have three objects that are on top of each other, if you will, the banner, eagle, shield. And we had to create those boundary offsets. We had to take our groups and trim to the boundary clearing inside of each of the boundary away so it, it gets rid of it and redraws it. So it gives that illusion of one thing in front of another. Okay? So we created our shield. Uh, we took a, a, a 2D vector from our clip art of a three-pointed shield, shield number five. Uh, we lowered the edges down and made some arcs. We arced the side around and then we mirrored it over to create the other side. Took some rectangles to create the stripes and trimmed everything together. Added our three stars at the top. And then that shield, that grouped shield was behind the eagle. So we created two offsets for the eagle. One for the raised effect, the second for the trim. So the shield was selected first, that outside boundary was selected second, it was trimmed away. Then we put the banner in front of the eagle, created its two offsets, one for the raised effect, the second offset for the trim. And then the eagle and everything that was inside of that banner was grouped together. It was selected first, the outside boundary of the banner was selected second or last, and it was trimmed, clearing inside that boundary. And it gives the illusion of the banner being in front of the eagle. Right? So whatever that banner is covering, you can't see, right? So you can't see that eagle. And whatever the eagle's covering, you can't see of the shield. So it gives that illusion of one thing on top of the other. Okay? All right. So if you got something from this tutorial, how about a thumbs up, you know, on the video and everything uh, and, and all. Uh, be sure to hit that thumbs up and, uh, you know, it helps the algorithm and stuff. And all that, all that good jazz. And, uh, you know, um, this is something that, uh, you know, you could uh, incorporate, if you will, into, you know, in, in, into your... Uh, you know, your projects and your designs. And so now we're gonna do really quickly a real basic, simple something, uh, just to kind of give you a, a bit of an idea, okay? Something quick and dirty. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna turn off this layer here, okay? I'm going to create just a rectangle for right now. Uh, let's stretch it out. No particular size in mind. I'm just kind of making a rectangle and I'm going to center it on the material. Okay. I'm going to take and bring in that heart 
right? That picture of that heart that, um, that I had earlier. And I'm going to trace that heart. Turn that fading off. Go up to 75. And preview, apply, and close. And I'm just going to delete the image after I do the tracing, right? So I got the heart here. Uh, I'm going to size the heart up. Hold down that shift key. Size it up. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here and take some text and I'm going to go mom, all capital letters, M-O-M. -M. Uh, I'm going to go two, three, three inches and I'm going to center that on the material. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and manually now size it up. like that and then I'm going to take a rectangle here now that rectangle I want square corners not radius corners so let's go square and click apply because I want to size it down a little bit I don't want it coming right to the edge there I want to size it down Hold that shift key and it'll keep it centered while it sizes down. Okay. And I'm going to take and write in capital letters, I love you. And let's size that text down to one inch tall. Get it centered on the board. Now, I want to center it inside this rectangle. I'm going to hold the rectangle last, and I'm going to go to my alignment tool and center inside that last item. And then I'm going to take this I love you, and I'm going to stretch it out. Hold that shift key down and grab the side node and stretch it out about like that. Okay, now I technically have three objects. I have a heart, the word mom, and think of the rectangle being, the rectangle and I love you being together, right? Uh, that's on top of mom. So I need mom over the heart and the rectangle over mom. So first thing I'm going to do is on mom, I'm going to create my offset boundary and everything. <clears throat> and in this case, I only need one offset. Um, uh, just one for the trimming, not two like I did with the eagle. So I'm going to go offset and I'm going to go outward and I'm going to go an eighth of an inch. Offset. Okay. And then I'm going to take my heart. I'm going to select that boundary, that offset boundary. And all right, so mom is three separate words, right? Three separate boundaries. It's not together. So I'm going to select one two, three first and group them together. Treat it like one object. So group those three separate objects together. That boundary is together, grouped. All right, now select that heart first and then that grouped boundary last. And I want to clear that candy cane. I want to clear inside that boundary, okay? And then we can go ahead and delete that and this as well. Okay. And that'll give the illusion of, you know, the um, mom is kind of over the heart. You'll see in a moment. And then I want to take my rectangle and offset it. Uh, carve skip carve one time so offset it one time select mom -M, mom and then select the outside boundary and clear that 
use that candy cane clear clear inside the boundary okay that puts the rectangle in front of that now this let me undo that because this inside of this O does not belong. That's part of that offset that was created. It doesn't belong there. Get rid of that. Let's do that one more time. Select mom and then this and clear. There we go. And then we delete that boundary. Don't need it. Okay. Now this, uh, let's put that boundary back. Hold on. Let's put that undo, put that boundary back because the heart goes through that rectangle, right? The heart goes through that rectangle. So we're going to select that boundary. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Clear inside the boundary and clear. Wonderful. And delete that. Now, we want mom and the heart to be kind of done together because you see how it creates this uh, line right here and it's the lines touching that. We don't want that, okay? So this is going to be together. So I'm actually gonna use the trim tool to help me uh, scissors this time because really all I want to do is I want to connect these two lines trim away this connect this and trim away that okay so let's do a bit of an undo 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 okay and what I'd like to do here what I'd like to do here to do here is I'm going to take this heart and mom and I'm going to group that together as one object. Group that together as one object. And then I'm going to trim it to the boundary. That rectangle. Clear inside. Okay. Get rid of that boundary. We don't need it anymore. Hit the delete key. <clears throat> and now you can see what has occurred here because I grouped them together. It did exactly what I wanted to do. I don't have to manually trim it. You know, it created that together. Now I could have went in just a second ago and just trimmed it away with the scissors to create that same look. But by just stepping back once, grouping those two things together and then just redoing that re-clear inside the boundary, it did it for me. Right? Why not? All right. Let's create our toolpath. So we're going to select this. Now, if you're wondering where the lower part of the O is here, well, that O was inside that boundary when it was uh, trimmed away, so it was removed. So it's not there. You wouldn't see it. This rectangle is technically covering that bottom part of that O. Okay? All right, cool. All right, let's create our toolpath, V-carve toolpath. Uh, same, I'll just use the same tools and calculate. Reset the preview and preview that visible toolpath. Okay, let's add some color just for context and everything. And now some of you may say like, well, it looks weird with this being up here and it not being there, right? Not being there. Let's step back a couple of steps, okay? Let's step back a couple of steps. Let's undo, undo, and let's take I love you and the two rectangles and let's move them up a little bit. Bump them up just a little bit so we have a little bit of that circle below and a little bit above right that way visually it doesn't look so odd right so we're gonna select the heart and mom they're still grouped together we're gonna select that outside boundary and we're going to trim clearing inside of that boundary 
Okay. We're going to come in and delete that boundary. And there's a little bit of something right there. We'll get rid of that trash there. And then we're going to recalculate that toolpath. So let's open it back up. Open it back up. There we go. And let's recalculate. Reset the preview and preview that visible toolpath. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Okay. And so we kind of, you know, whatever the M's are covering on the heart, you're not going to see of the heart. Uh, whatever the rectangle is covering over the M's, you're not going to see on the M's. And it kind of just gives that illusion of one thing in front of another. Okay one thing in front of another. All right. All right. Okie dokie. All right. Now, of course, you could do this almost like a text on text too, but we're not going to get into that. That's not part of the topic. We're talking about just how to make it look like we have three separate objects here, how to make it look like one thing is in front of another, right? So we those boundaries and that trimming. Okay, so let's uh, turn this back off, turn this back on, and let that go through. And that will conclude the lesson. So I'm going to turn the color off just so we can see that. And basically, you know, um, nothing too complicated with this sign, really. I mean, uh, this uh, could pretty much say anything, you know, uh, the text, you know, whatever you want. I just chose this wording, you know, just quick and simple. But uh, uh, thank you, Generations. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, uh, Darwin, Ronnie, everybody. Uh, T button, Jim. Good. So um, nothing too complicated of it. We have a picture of an eagle that we traced. Uh, we have a picture of a banner that we traced. The uh, in our clip art tab under the 2D vectors, we went through the all these little different 2D vectors, and we went all the way down to the very bottom. And right behind my head is a, a shield five. And let's I'll just drag it off over here again. You know that shield shape of the three points, and we did exactly what we did earlier. We lowered down these edges, redrew the arc and kind of shaped this arc out a bit, added our three rectangles to create our stripes, our stars. And, you know, so we took that shape and made something of it, right? We made this design of it and then took some stars and kind of give them slight offset. You know, we had them in line. We had them evenly spaced. But then we bumped this over twice. We took these two and bumped them over three times with our little left arrow key just to give a little bit of that wrap around and, um, and then added some text in and used our text edit spacing and curve tool so that we can curve our text, you know, uh, whatever we want to do. And in this case, just a very subtle curve. And, uh, get it positioned and all that stuff. And that's it. There's nothing really too technically complicated about this. Um, could be very easily duplicated, uh, replicated and stuff. And remember, when you're drawing your stars, 38.2 is your boundary or your uh, uh, inner radius percentage. Okay. And the reason for that is on the Patriot star, if I take a guideline and I come here, that top leg of the star is straight across. 
if I'm anything other than 38.2, if I'm too heavy, I'm gonna be too fat. If I'm less than 38.2, I'm gonna be too thin, okay? 38.2 is your magic number for anything constitutional with, regard, with regards to a constitutional star. 38.2 gives you that nice straight leg on the star, no matter what size the star is, okay? So if you're doing a union for a flag or something like this shield uh, and uh, what have you, um, 38.2. Okay, right? So if you like that, give a thumbs up. Uh, also remember builditv.com. There's a whole bunch of models and project files and things for sale over there. Support the channel so I don't have to do OnlyFans and, uh, you know, show my butt on, on <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, we will, um, uh, like I said, it, it's, uh, going to be every other week because I do have to do, you know, I have to have a plan B to make some money. Um, times are tough this, uh, during the summertime, everybody's carving, nobody's buying, but, uh, uh, help out if you want buy some models, buy some projects and stuff. Uh, this file will um, be available for download, uh, you know, five or six dollars or something like that on the website later. And uh, you'll get the vectors and the CRV file as well. And uh, yeah, there you go. All right, everybody. Well, that concludes tonight's class. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it with regards to, you know, trimming, boundaries, offsets. I don't, I think we did some node editing. Not sure. Might have. I know we did when we created that little rose, right, with the heart. But um, uh, curve your text, you know, with the edit text spacing curve tool and uh, all that good stuff. V-carve toolpath with a profile cut. Until next time. We'll see. Uh, here, real quick before I leave, uh, builditv.com. I'll throw the website, www.builditv.com. Now, builditv.com. Go to the shop. And now, until I organize the shop, the top part of all the models is a bunch of frames. After the frames is a bunch of clocks. And then after clocks is a bunch of animals. And then other, you know, holiday and Christmas and 4th of July and all these other signs and all. You're going to have to scroll until I can organize and get the frames and everything kind of organized and stuff. There's a filter in the top of the page where you can filter by flags. There's flags and eagles and all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's frames. There's uh, clocks. There's uh, religious stuff. Uh, you can use the filter to hide the things that you don't want to see. If you're just doing the full no filter, then you got to scroll past to about 100 different frames and then about 110 different clocks and then the patriotic stuff and the animals and everything. But there's models. There's more than just frames on there. Everybody's like, is that all you have is just frames? No, scroll, 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 or use the filter at the top of the page on the top left and uh, filter in, uh, you know, to see the different categories, right? But uh, until I can organize it a little bit better and put the frames a little bit down further, that's the first thing you see when you go to the shop, okay? All right. Uh, thanks, Donald. I appreciate that. Uh, I really do. That's a nice uh, compliment. I appreciate that. But hopefully um, in this, in, in its simplicity, it wasn't, hopefully it wasn't too complicated in the, this design that we did. And it's something that you could do again with your own kind of thought or design or something, right? You know, uh, and, uh, and everything. And to create that raised effect, we selected our design and the inner boundary, right? That boundary so that the V-carve toolpath cuts between these two lines. It skips between these two lines, which is the star that's going to be raised. Then it cuts between these two lines. Then it skips. So this border of the shield is going to be raised and then it carves in here. Then it skips the star and then it carves in here. So that's how a V-carve toolpath works. It goes... Cars between two lines, skips two lines. Cars between two lines, skips two lines. So if I would not have had this boundary selected when we did this, it would have just carved this design into 
the material and created just a regular sign. Um, we wouldn't have this outer boundary of this eagle. We'll turn that off. Um, and I'll do a V-carved toolpath just to show you. If we did a V-carved toolpath, no boundary, no boundary selected, and the outside boundary of the eagle turned off as well. Um, hold on a second. Bear with me a minute. Oh, yeah, that one's regrouped together, so that would be a little bit tough to do. Um... Let me think. Uh, give me a second. All right. To do a regular V carve, I got to fix this boundary right here. This boundary. It's, it's not connected to anything, right? So I need, I need it to kind of, uh, it's, it's made for the raised effect, right? Because of the trimming that we did. So if I wasn't gonna trim this, and this will be the last thing I say to this, let's say I just wanted to V-carve it in. If I try to V-carve it right now, let me do the V-carve right now. Let me turn, we'll leave it selected, right? Let's, let's try to V-carve this right now. Um, flat depth of an eighth, that's fine. Calculate. Do, 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 do. All right, reset the preview and preview the visible toolpath. Carve, 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 carve. All right, let's add some color so you can kind of get some context. You see how the eagle's kind of backwards, the eagle's reversed, if you will, the head's carved in and all that stuff. That's because that boundary line isn't there, right? That reverse, that reversal. So I'm going to take and I'm going to create that boundary line, right? So I'm going to take this object here, this object here, and this object here. And I'm going to create a boundary offset. I don't think I need that one. Let me see here. Carve, carve. Yeah, no, don't select that. So just that. And I'm going to go offset. I'll go outward in uh, a sixteenth of an inch. 0.0625. Offset. All right. Make sure you're in the right layer. Turn that off. Make sure layer one selected. Let's do that again. I'm going to go less than a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to go 0 0.05. 0 0.05 offset. Okay. Now, that's good. I'm going to delete this. I don't want that. And I'm going to delete that. All right, what I just did is I created a new boundary all the way around the banner and everything here. So let's do it again. Let's open up that toolpath, select that new offset this time. And because we added this line, now it's gonna carve, every other line is gonna carve the eagle correctly. Um, we're gonna continue. Continue, continue, continue. All right, reset that. Preview the visible toolpath. That, 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 that. And now you can see the eagle carves normally, right? With that extra boundary. So this is just a regular V carve sign, no raised effect, just a regular V carve into the wood. Nothing wrong with that at all. All I did was, let's turn off this boundary and add this boundary into it, right? That surrounds everything. And 
that gives us that raised effect, right? So that raised effect. Right, so it carves opposite of what the regular one is. Right, so we could have done just a regular V carve, but in this case it was the raised effect because we had the border selected. All right, and that offset that I created to do the regular effect does not need to be selected in this case because it doesn't apply. Right, only if I was doing it as a V carve. So hopefully that didn't confuse you. I just wanted to kind of explain to you how we got that raised effect, and now. That's going to conclude the lesson for the day. Hopefully you understood what I'm talking about. Basically, we had that border selected that gives us that raised effect. If we did not have the border selected, then it would just carve a regular V carve into the material. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, everybody. Um, hey, Michael Murphy. Uh, great to see you. Be sure to check out this video. It'll be posted as soon as the class ends, right? It'll be posted live. Be sure to check it since you're just now popping in, but it's awesome to see you as well. Really good to see you. I uh, hope things are going well with you and uh, hope things are going well with all of you. All right, everybody. I appreciate you hanging out with me for this uh, hour and 30 minutes. Uh, it's going to be a short night. We will not see you next Tuesday. We'll see you the Tuesday after. Um, and like I said, for the next, you know, little bit, we're going to be doing every other week. Um, and, uh, and we just got to, um, you know, in order to keep things kind of free, right? All right, everybody. Until next time, we'll see you soon.